Hello and welcome to USANA Live Training. Today's topic is Advanced DLM. Uh, if you have not watched the first DLM training, I suggest you start with that uh, video first. Uh, this is going to talk about some of the more advanced features of DLM and not the basic features. Uh, and with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So the things we're going to cover tonight uh, are going to be the custom query, your saved reports, uh, how to quickly find associates without having to run a report, um, the uh, recent updates, <coughs> uh, display meaning when 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 was data last updated in the system, how how up to date is the data in the system? We actually display that. Uh, uh, display report data, set up landing page. I think I'm missing an item there. Uh, and exporting data, so PDF and Excel. The item I'm missing on here is your preferences. So with that, we can go ahead and jump right into DLM. The first thing I'll show you is the Uh, custom query. So this site, this user right here is a test user. It does not have a lot of data in it. Uh, and it definitely does not have much data in the last week. So you can see that my personal assistant is all zeroed out, uh, whereas yours will probably have information here. To create a custom query, you're going to go to the miscellaneous tab section. It's the very first piece there, custom query. We click on that. And what this does is a lot of these reports here uh, have various options and show you specific reports. <clears throat> With the custom query, I have the ability to create a finite uh, subset of data that I'm looking for. So if by chance I want to know if it's someone I personally sponsored or it's everyone on my downline, uh, which side it's on, so my left downline, my right downline, or my whole downline. If I wanted to go to a specific business center, say I wanted to go to my 16 or something like that. Uh, um, if uh, I want their auto ship, on auto ship, not on auto ship. Uh, business centers, so starting with new business center, uh, going up to whatever. Maybe I wanted everyone that's a gold director below or silver director below. Um, uh, application dates, I want everyone that uh, applied within this time range. Qualification dates, title date betweens. Uh, so everyone that's ranked advanced within a certain date range, uh, renewal date between last purchase date, uh, personal volume between, so everyone, maybe I want to see everyone who has less than 100 personal volume. <clears throat> um, carryovers, uh, locations, so such as cities, states, countries, maybe I, maybe I want everyone in Taiwan that's in my downline. Uh, language within email address. Uh, so what you'll find is not all of your downline has an email address. So if you're building a list of people that you want to send an email to or an e-card, uh, this is helpful. It'll just bring back the people who actually have email addresses. Uh, return first. And this just is number of rows. You can go up to 1,000. Uh, so those of you who have really big downlines, uh, you can't see more than 1,000 results at a time. So these finite controls will help you out. Now the advanced tab, so this is the, the data subset that you want to get. The advanced is how you're going to display that data. So in here, you'll say, OK, I want their ID, their first name, their last name. Uh, maybe their locations, maybe I want their email address, uh, perhaps I want their country, 
pulse different information. And what this does is this is actually going to display these pieces of information for each person. They'll have a line of data with each of these pieces populated on that row. And that's pretty much it. That's it for the custom uh, report. Now what you can do with these, so say we want to run this. So I run this report and here's the data I get back. From here I can now either send it in an email, send it in an e-card, but I can also save it. So I could save this report, I think it just popped up another window over here, and give it a name, Rick's Test Report. Save the report, and now my report is saved. So that takes me into the next topic, which is my saved reports. So I just created this uh, Rick's test report right here. I run it, there it is. I don't have to rebuild it every time. It's there for me any time I come in. Um, and you can do as many of these as you want. Uh, I don't think there's any limitation on how many of these you do. As you can see, this test user has quite a few. And that's all it is. To get to your saved reports, it's in its own section here at the bottom. Just expand it and find the report you want to run that you've previously saved, and you've run the report. Now, let's say, let's say you want to run a volume report. So I've run my volume report. It doesn't have to be a custom report to make it into a saved report. So this particular uh, this is just the volume report. I can again hit save report and I can say vol report one, two, three, four, five, whatever you want to call it. Save the report. Come back in a second, hopefully. Let's see if that worked. And I don't see it. So I'll have to look at what I did wrong. Oh, no, there it is. Vol report 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's my volume report. Um, and that's it for a saved report. Let's see what our next topic was. Uh, associate quick find. So this is a pretty slick little feature. First, I want to show you, you do have reports to find associates. So you've got your people finder. So associate count, associate search. But down here is a special little section to find a single associate and in the information. So say you've got someone in your downline you need to contact real fast. Instead of going to one of those reports, you could just put in their information here. And I don't know of a person off the top of my head. So I'll just do the test user themselves. And it pops up this guy right here, which uh, is our Robert for sure. Um, um, and it has all his information, just the same information as if you would, uh, as if you were on a, a different report and you clicked on one of these people, such as, say I go back to my test report and I click details. It's the same exact detail page, uh, except it has more information than this page has. And that's all you got to do. You just scroll down here, access associate, put in your associate ID, ID, hit go, and it pops up your window with everything you need to know about that one associate. You can send them an email, send them an e-card right from this section. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Find out uh, how recent your data was updated because you know this is not real time. This is a reporting system, so in some cases it could be a couple of minutes behind. Uh, in other cases, when we're doing our commission runs on the weekend and stuff, it could be uh, several hours behind. To see how up to date your data is, um, you can see this link right here. 
which says uh, DLM update times. And uh, by clicking on that, just take a second, this tells me on all of this data here what was the most recent update. So the volume data, which is probably the biggest one of all, um, which most of your downline is, is managed through, <clears throat> is, uh, was updated on March 15, 2011. So it's up to date. Now the next thing I wanted to show you is the preferences. Uh, preferences are accessed in this blue box here also. Uh, and it says my DLM preferences. With this you can do several things. Uh, so you can show report data in a separate window. What this does, I'll turn this on for you, and when I run one of my reports, so I've just done that, I'm going to save preferences. My preferences have been saved. Uh, let's go run my saved report. It now popped open this report in a different window. You see that? Instead of opening it up in the original window, I have a separate window. If you run dual screen, this is a great feature. You can have your DLM up in one window and your reports popping up in the other window. I'll go ahead and close that. Um, another feature in the DLM preferences is printer friendly format and I'll save this and show you what it does. And so we'll go back to my saved reports. And so it's created the same report. For, first I want to point out it opened it in a separate window like I requested, but also it put it in a format that's much more friendly to a printer. So it's, it's, a, it's a little more cryptic looking in my opinion, but it's a, it's a lot faster to print than the other version. Um, DLM preferences. So if I want to undo that, uh, show tips and suggestions, you can turn that by default that's on, you can turn that off. Uh, display graphs in 3D or 2D. And the graphs it's referring to is on the landing page. So if I go back here, I've got these graphs at the bottom. They're going to grow here in a second, probably, or not, because I don't have any data. Um, if you were a real associate and you had some data, these things slide up by themselves. That's the 3D, 2D thing. Um, my DLM preferences. Uh, on the landing page, what charts, what graphs do I want to show? You know, so four-week cycle chart for my 001, 002, 003. Uh, return first 25 rows up to a thousand. That's your default number of rows to return. Um, personal assistant. Maybe you want to focus your personal assistant on just your silvers and below. So in this case, maybe I say new business centers up to silver director, and then my personal assistant only shows those new people because I may not be so concerned with the golds and above because. I know they know what they're doing already. And I, and I don't need too much information being sent out to me every single time I go into DLM. So you can save that. And, and that's pretty much that. The next thing I wanted to show you, let's go back to my saved report. Oop, let me go fix that real fast. I want it to go back to the normal reports for this thing I want to show you. So we'll save preferences and then go to my, so I, I changed my preferences back to open the report within the same window. Up here in the top right hand corner are the export options. So with the export I have the option of, uh, hold on, we'll circle that again. I have the option of printing it, getting a uh, PDF, getting it in Excel, or getting a comma-separated value file. 
which is Excel can open those. They're just a comma separated file. So if I click on any of these, it will give me my options. Um, I think that must open somewhere else. The PDF, so it's opening a PDF for me. And here's my PDF. So I just had that report um, come up on a PDF. So I could save that, I could email it, whatever I wanted to do with that. If I want to open this into my Excel, just takes a second to load. There we go. So now I have it in Excel, and I can now manipulate this data in Excel any way I want add it to existing Excel files, uh, do whatever I want. So this gives me more advanced capability for calculations that I don't have in Income Maximizer, because Income Maximizer is just a reporting tool, really. Um, if I'm going to do very complex uh, manipulation of my data to really pinpoint certain trends or anything like that, this is where exporting to Excel becomes very powerful. And then if I don't have Excel, maybe you use uh, another, you know, like Star Office or perhaps Google Docs or something. The CSV, uh, as you can see here, is basically a comma-separated file of the same data, which is easily consumed by a, any kind of tool that does what Excel does, but doesn't happen to be Excel. And I believe that is it for our advanced features. So uh, to wrap this up, uh, thank you for joining us on this training of advanced DLM. It was very short. Uh, fortunately, I believe that's because most of DLM is pretty easy to use. If you have questions related to Advanced DLM or any of our online systems, uh, you are always welcome to contact me. This is my email address at the bottom. And uh, if I don't know the answer, I know who does. So shoot me an email and I will get you an answer as quickly as possible or I will forward it on to the, the person or people that do know the answer so they can get you a response. And thank you all for joining us.